Sade is no doubt one of the most notable female music artists to ever grace the industry. One thing that's been apparent from the beginning and worked in her favor is her intention to keep her private life, well, private, and let her artistry take center stage. Helen Folachade Adu was born on January 16, 1959, in Ibadan, Nigeria. Her middle name, from where her stage name would originate, means crowning glory. Her Nigerian father, an economics professor, and her British mother, a nurse, met in London, married there in the mid-1950s, and then moved to Nigeria. When Chardet was just four years old, her parents divorced, and her mother then returned to England, taking Chardet and her older brother with her. They really didn't have anywhere to go, so they ended up moving in with Chardet's grandmother in Essex. Chardet says she did stay in touch with her father, who remained in Nigeria throughout her childhood. She grew up listening to soul legends Curtis Mayfield, Donny Hathaway, and Marvin Gaye, but unlike many other singers, didn't have any grand aspirations to become a music superstar herself. After completing high school, Chardet moved to London to study fashion design. Fun fact, Chardet got the opportunity to showcase her wardrobe designing skills on popular British new wave band Spando Ballet for a show they were doing in New York. Her next move was opening her own boutique in London, where she also modeled the merchandise. She's admitted that she ended up in fashion because she thought she could make a living out of it, not because she had some sort of passion for it. In fact, she didn't love it at all. Fate, as it were, would step in to guide her to a more suitable line of work. A friend of hers had his own singing group called Pride. One of their backup singers had left, and with a concert coming up, they needed someone to fill the spot. He asked Chardet if she could sing, and her reply was she could try. So she gave it her best shot during an audition. As Chardet tells it, they initially turned her down, but came crawling back when they couldn't find anyone better. She must have had some endearing talent since she'd eventually take on the lead vocalist role after another group member left. During this time, she formed a songwriting partnership with the band's guitarist and saxophonist, Stuart Matthewman. Together, backed by Pride's rhythm section, they began doing their own sets at the band's shows. Despite her inexperience, Chardet became so popular that upwards of 1,000 people that came to see her at one particular gig ended up being turned away. Before long, Chardet's solo performances began attracting the attention of record companies. In 1983, Chardet, Stewart, and fellow Pride members, bassist Paul Denman and keyboardist Andrew Hale, left the group to form their own collective, simply named Chardet. Drummer Paul Anthony Cook was also a part of the group for a short time. Rumor has it, though, that he ended up getting left out of the mix because Chardet fired him after he objected to her signing a solo deal. Epic Records presented the most attractive option, so Chardet signed with them and got straight to work. The group's debut album, titled Diamond Life, was released in the summer of 1984. It reached number two on the UK album chart and won the Brit Award for Best British Album. The album was also a hit internationally, reaching the top spot in several countries and the top 10 in the US. Your Love is King was released as the album's lead single and was a success in European territories, but less so elsewhere. The third single, Smooth Operator, became the most successful song in the US from the album. It peaked at number five on the Hot 100, as well as captured the number one spot on the adult contemporary chart. In late 1985, the band released their second album, Promise, which peaked at number one in both the UK and the US. The project went double platinum in the UK, quadruple platinum in the US, and spawned three singles. The first, The Sweetest Taboo, did the best out of the bunch, peaking at number five on the Hot 100, number three on the adult contemporary chart, and number three on the hot R&B hip hop singles chart. The following year, the band won a Grammy for Best New Artist. Chardet's third album, Stronger Than Pride, was released three years later, and like their previous album, became a commercial success, going platinum in the UK and three times platinum in the US. The album was popularized by four singles, most notably the second single, Paradise, which became another top 20 pop hit and shot to number one on the R&B hip hop songs chart, becoming the band's first single to do so. Chardet's personal life took a positive turn the following year when she wed a Spanish film director and moved to Madrid for a time. Sadly, their always turbulent relationship wouldn't last. Years later, Chardet would open up about the immense pain she felt over the failure of the union that took her five years to fully recover from. Love Deluxe was released as the band's fourth studio album in 1992. It peaked at number three and went on to become certified four times platinum in the US. 
The lead single, No Ordinary Love, locked down another Grammy win for Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Groove with Vocal. The four-year gap between this project and the group's last would be the biggest thus far and cause the lead singer especially to have to deal with an array of tabloid-generated rumors that said she was in a mental hospital after an emotional breakdown and suffered from a variety of drug abuses. The real reason for the absence, she says, was simply her need to take time off after the group's 1988 tour came to an end and left her drained. We had forgotten what life was all about, I think. The best part of what we do is making records. If you don't have any time away from the music business, there's nothing that really inspires you to make a record. Sade moved briefly to the Caribbean to live with a Jamaican music producer in the late 90s and gave birth in 1996 to her first child, a daughter named Isla. The couple would later separate. The island would also serve as the backdrop to the only scandal, if you could call it that, that Sade has apparently ever been a part of when she was arrested for reckless driving and failing to make several court appearances. She claims that it really wasn't a traffic incident, got blown out of proportion, and essentially boiled down to a policeman trying to pressure her into giving him a bribe. In order to avoid arrest, Sade said she plans never to return to the island. Following an eight-year hiatus, the group released their fifth studio album, Lovers Rock, in 2000. It's been eight years since you put out a, a new a new album with brand new material on it. What have you been up to? Just living your life? Ducking and diving, <laughs> <laughs> bobbing and weaving. Just waiting for a peaceful moment in my life so that I could get into the studio and just put myself in totally to making the record, just waiting for that break. You know? The Triple Platinum Project earned them the Grammy Award for Best Pop Vocal Album, and the lead single, By Your Side, was also nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance. After finishing off another tour the following year, Sade retreated to her home in the Gloucestershire countryside to give her young daughter her undivided attention. Sade has been in a relationship with former Marine and fireman turned scientist Ian Watts since 2007. Perhaps in a sign of her domestic happiness, she became slightly more forthcoming about her personal life when asked by her local paper in 2012, describing Ian as the one. I always said that if I could just find a guy who could chop wood and had a nice smile, it didn't bother me if he was an aristocrat or a thug, as long as he was a good guy. And I've ended up with an educated thug. I have a lovely stepson who lives with us, and I feel lucky, like I've won the lottery, finally. Then Sade went radio silent once again, this time for an entire decade. The group resurfaced in 2010 with their sixth studio album, Soldier of Love. It immediately placed atop the Billboard 200 in the United States, becoming their first album to debut at number one. The album featured the singles Baby Father, The Moon in the Sky, as well as the title track and lead single. At the 2011 Grammy Awards, the title track won Best R&B Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals, while Baby Father was nominated for Best Pop Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocals. As usual, nothing more was heard from the group until 2018, when Sade released the acoustic ballad Flower of the Universe for the soundtrack to the Disney film A Wrinkle in Time, as well as The Big Unknown for the motion picture Widows. Also around this time, bandmate and collaborator Stuart Matthewman revealed in an exclusive interview to RatedRnB.com that they were also working on a new Sade album. On National Coming Out Day in 2016, Sade's child, now going by the name Isaac Theo Adu, came out as a transgender man. In 2019, he publicly thanked his mother for her love and support throughout his transition, sharing a photo on Instagram of the pair cuddled up at a restaurant. In October 2022, Sade became linked to Brad Pitt. But not for the reason you may think. She ended up being the first artist to record in his newly renovated Miraval studio at the famed Chateau Miraval in the south of France. Sade had actually previously recorded portions of the Promise album in the original incarnation of the studio. So does this mean we're getting closer to the release of a new project? Who knows? What we do know for sure at this point can be summed up in the statement spray painted years ago across some posters in New York City advertising Sade's 2000 song By Your Side that came out after her longest absence at the time from the music scene. An unknown vandal wrote, bitch sings when she wants to. And yes, Sade did see it and loved it.